Hello and a dark welcome to Banjo Mortis. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at the Adams Family theme. I thought that would be a fun one to start with. Um, now it's not a complete beginner piece. If you'd like help with setting up your banjo, with learning about the strings, how to use a tuner, how to hold the banjo, then I'm really happy to do that. But that sort of thing is best done on a one-to-one -one basis, which we can do online. Um, and if you'd like, if you'd like that, um, then if you click on my Facebook page link, which is the icon is in the, the banner for this um, and send me a private message, then we can we can arrange that. So I'm assuming that for this purposes of this lesson that you know, the, 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 at least the open strings um, and you're comfortable holding your banjo. Beyond that, you probably don't need to know too much. OK, so let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is emulate the, the riff at the beginning. Da 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 da, da 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 da. So how are we going to do that? First, take your open G string and pluck it with your index finger. And then put your middle finger on your left hand down on the second fret of that same string. So and play the note. So G, A is that note. And then we're going up to our open B string and plucking that. And then put your index finger down on the first fret of that B string and play that note. So what we've done there is a little run up in G actually, in the, in the scale of G. So we've gone G, A, B, C, open, second fret, open B string, C. If we speed that up a bit, we get. Okay. Now, to do that nice, the, the, the clicks, there's many options with the banjo. It's quite nice just to tap the drum and it saves moving your hands away too much, but you can do whatever you, whatever you feel is right. So. so that's the first part of the riff. So I'll just do that once more. G, A, B, C, tap, tap. Open third, second on the third. Open on the second. First on the second, tap, tap. So then we're going to do the same thing, but the notes are going up slightly. So this time we're starting on that A. So hold down the second fret of your G string with your index, with your middle finger, sorry, and pluck the string again. And then next play your open B string again. And this time we're putting our middle finger on the second fret of the B string. And then the third one next to it. So that gives you another little run. And then you've got your taps again. So we put that all together. There we go. And in the song, the second part of it, the gets played three or four times slightly faster and then we go into the song. So any little recognisable run of notes like that is called a riff. That doesn't matter what kind of music it is. Um, any little 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 hooky line that you're always going to remember is called a riff. So that's our riff part for the Adams Family. That's how we're going to start it. Okay so now we're going to look at a basic forward roll. Now there are a million type of rolls and it's important not to get too caught up in learning this particular one or any other particular one. What's a really good idea is to pick just one or two that you're comfortable with to start with and then experiment a bit with accompanying songs with them and then once you've got to the point where you can play them fluently without looking at your strings or your fingers, best, a really good uh, trick with this is to sit which will drive you if you've got people if you've got a partner or people in the house will drive them absolutely crazy because there's no headphones so 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 it's worth doing just for that um 
is to shut your eyes and sit there in front of the TV. And get to the point where you can do it literally without thinking about it. That's how to get rolls, rolls fluent. OK, I digress. So we're going to look at a, a simple forward roll. Now, I've already put the tab and the um, lyrics and chords for this um, in the public folder. There's a link in my general about information. And with these videos, I'm going to try and put the music there for you about a week before I actually broadcast these teaching sessions. So, I'm so the link will be both in the banner and in the comments each time. And you just go in and, and download it and then you can print it off, you can have it on a screen, you can, you can do whatever you want with it. OK. So, if you look at the music, the tab, tab is a numbering system, you may know already, for playing a banjo or any other stringed instrument without the need to read music. And basically it tells you what number fret to hold down on each string. OK. Now, my banjo music goes a little bit further because if you're lucky and, and I have put this in here for you, it also tells you which finger or thumb on your right hand, if you're right handed, if that's your plucking hand, if you're left handed, then everything's the other way around, um, which string to, to, to play, to, which finger to use. OK. And the instructions are T, thumb, I, index, M, middle. Now generally we don't pluck a banjo with anything other than the thumb, the index and the middle. There are times when you will, there's no reason why you can't, but most traditional banjo rolls etc use those three fingers and that's what we're going to be doing with, with this roll. Okay, so what we're doing, we're not going to worry about chords at the moment, we're going to play this roll with our open strings. So we're going thumb on the third or G string, index on the second or B string, and then middle finger on the D or the first string. Now what we want to do is bring our thumb up to the top of the strings where you've got your lovely G drone string. So thumb, index, middle, thumb, thumb, index, middle, thumb. OK, and then speed that up a little bit. Thumb, index, middle, thumb. So your thumb is playing the third string first and then it's clipping the G. We, we sometimes call this the drone string. And it's what gives that gives a G a uh, five string G banjo its distinctive tone. So thumb index middle thumb thumb index middle thumb. Okay. So once you've got that under your belt, then you might like to vary the first, the bass string. OK, so instead of starting off with the third string, we're starting off with the fourth string. So this time we're going thumb, index, middle, thumb. So four, two, one, five. Now if you put that together, you've got starting on the third string again. Three, two, one, five, four, two, one, five. So that, when you play it together like that, is an alternating roll because you're alternating the note that you start with. So in this Adams Family song, we're going to be using that nice and slowly. So. OK, so that's our roll and that's notated underneath your tab as T-I-M-T -T, once again. So thumb, index, middle, thumb, 
thumb, index, middle, thumb. So now what we need to do is learn some chords for, for, because we don't want to we don't know we don't want to play the whole song in open G because that would be that would be very boring. So we have three chords in this song. We've got C major, D minor and G7. And again, the chords are set out for you in little boxes at the top of the lyrics and chord sheets. But let's have a look at them here. So the first one is a C major chord. So we want index finger on the first fret of our B string, middle finger on the second fret of our lower D string, it's your fourth string, and then your third finger slots in underneath it on the second fret of your D string. So if we just strum that down in no particular fashion, that's a C major now. Now if you find it hard to hold the frets down, which you will do if you haven't been playing for long, it's a really good idea to try to pluck the, strung, the strings individually until you get a clear sound. And if, you've, if one buzzes, take your hand away, give it a shake, put them back. The usual region for buzzing is that your, the flesh of your finger, the nice fleshy bits at the end here, are blocking one of the other strings. So it's important to try and imagine you've got like a, a little disc on the end of your finger. Once you've been playing for a while, you'll actually get some nice little calluses there, so it'll be, it'll be easier. Um, but while you're learning, imagine there's a little disc or a pencil rubber on the end of your finger and place it nice and squarely in the middle of the fret and don't put too much pressure on. Your hand should be still able to move around quite comfortably. Your thumb is not a support like that. You shouldn't be holding your banjo up like that. It should be a pivot on the back of your nice curved fretboard. Ideally, imagine that you need to put, you need to put a rod, some kind of, I don't know, some kind of tool, pencil, whatever, underneath your fingers, um, because they shouldn't be flat to the fretboard like this with your elbow down here, because it's going to buzz. Because if I go, it buzzes. Whereas if I'm nice and square onto my fretboard, I've got lots of space and I'm using the ends of my fingers and you get a nice clean sound. Okay, I, I digress, but I think it's important. Um, lots of pe people don't often explain how to stop chords buzzing and that, that type of thing. And that really only comes with having gone through the process. So I like to, I like to, to help and, and, and try and explain these things. Okay, so back to our roll. We want to do the same roll again, but this time with the C major chord down. So, three, two, one, five, thumb, index, middle, thumb. And then we've got the second part of our roll. Okay, so that you've just done your first forward roll with a C major chord, okay? So now let's look at our next chord, which is a D minor, which is kind of a sad D. It's a it's a banjo mortis D. A minor chord is a a slightly darker sounding chord than a than a major chord. Okay, so we have if you if you've got your chord diagram there, great. If not, don't worry. If you use your pinky finger this time to hold the third fret down on your D string, which is the highest string. And then you'll put your third finger on the fret directly above it, which is the third fret on your B string. And then use your index finger and hold down the second fret on your G string. So that's second fret on the G string, third fret on the B string, third fret on the D string. And that gives you that nice, slightly kind of wistful chord sound. 
your other strings are open. So now let's try the roll with our D minor chord. So thumb, index, middle, thumb. And now with the fourth string starting, your D string, thumb, index, middle, thumb. So we put that all together. And then we've got one chord left, which is G7, which is a lovely easy chord. Because a banjo is in open G, that's your default chord. So we want a slightly darker sounding bluesy G. That's what a seventh is. It's a blues chord, basically. And all we need to do to get that is use the third finger on the third fret of our high D string. So if I take that off so you can hear the difference. That's a G major, that's a G7, so that gives you that lovely bluesy sound. So let's leave that fret held down and try the roll again. So that sounds totally different now, doesn't it? So thumb, index, middle, thumb, and then using our alternate bass D string. So that's our three chords and our roll that we're going to use for this. Now we're not using the full roll on just one chord, we're going to change. So now let's try and do that. So what we're going to do now is play C major with the first part of the roll and then we're going to very slowly change to our D minor chord and play the second part of the roll. So C major chord again. If you need a reminder, index finger on the first fret of your B string and then those two fingers on the two D strings, one on the top one, one on the bottom one. Okay, I'll just try and show that. There we go. So we're going to go start with our the first part of the roll. So three, two, one. now we change to D minor so we want our pinky on the third fret of the D string third finger on the third fret of the B string above it and then your index finger slots down on the second fret of your G string and now let's play the second part of that roll so we've got four two one five so putting that together Go back to our C major, one, two, three. Second part. Okay. Now to make it work really well with the song, because at the moment you're probably still thinking, well, that doesn't really sound much like it at all. We want to introduce a bit of a swing into the pace at which we, into, into the tempo at which we play, we play the strings. At the moment, we just, we've just been doing even even length notes. So if we have a, introduce a little bit of a swing. One and two, three. And again, one and two, three. And now let's try it with the, the roll, changing our chords and with that slightly it's known as a swung rhythm. So, I'm doing this slowly, but I'm hoping that you're already hearing that it's going to fit under the they're creepy and they're kooky. Okay, making sense? And now we're going to our G7 chord, which is a nice easy one, because it's just one finger. And then we're using the, we're starting the roll with the third string again, the G string. And then for the second part of the roll, we're going back to the C major chord. And I've got the swung rhythm in there, so. And 
those four chords will take you through the whole song, literally. So the first verse. The creepy and the kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Adam's family. Okay, makes sense. And then we can go back to our riff that we we we, we, we learned at the start. So. My dark themed friends is it really um, the riff gets played in the middle of the song and the bit that goes neat sweet petite um, and then at the end and the chords and lyrics are all on there so print it off enjoy and um, it'd be really good um, if you'd be happy to make a little donation to musicians supporting the homeless um, the link is on the banner and uh, it'll also be in the about information. Um, and if there's any aspects of it that you're not sure, drop something in the comments, contact me on my personal page, uh, sorry, on my um, Facebook page, drop me a direct message or on my Instagram page. Again, the links are in the banner. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, next month, um, well, the next release date will be the 1st of March um, and I'm going to be teaching how to play along with modern pop songs, basically. Um, specifically, we're going to be looking at The Funeral by Youngblood um, because um, it's quite nice to be able to pick up a banjo and play to any song. And, and all you really need to do is learn to listen um, and work out what, what, what works um, and you can use fairly simple chords um, to quite happily play along with whatever you like. So a bit different next month. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, as I said, if you've got any questions, then uh, put them in the comments, contact me on my pages and um, have a good month. <laughs>